I want to talk to you today about the principle of spiritual self-examination through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The principle of spiritual, tell your neighbor we are a spiritual people. And guess what's going to happen when your flesh dies and you go to heaven? You're going to be a spirit for eternity. Millions and millions and billions of years you're going to be a spirit. So the whole idea of us learning about God and trying to understand Him is that when we get there, we know what things are going on. Instead of getting to heaven and trying to talk to the angels and saying, well, what am I supposed to do here? Amen? So we're going to be spirits for the rest of our lives once we die and our flesh dies. And it's so important to understand the spiritual person, which is the true you. And I'm going to, hopefully through the power of the Holy Spirit, I can teach you to examine yourself spiritually. Amen? Amen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Give me A and point number one. Now this is what mental self-examination means. Mental self-examination means the study of one's own behavior and motivation. Amen? Now that's what the world says. The world says, look, you need to figure out who you are. Well, what if I'm a woman in the body of a man? Well, just be a woman. Mental self-examination. Well, what if I uh, don't want to be married uh, to my wife, you know, after 30 years of marriage and four kids, and I want to come out and be gay. Mental self-examination. You study your own behaviors and motivations, and the world says, you just need to follow that. That's what the world says. But we're not teaching on mental self-examination, because we know that mental health examination without the power of the Holy Spirit only leads you to be more corrupt. Amen? Amen? All these people that are pushing homosexuality and lesbianism and transgender and, and papa gender, mama gender, whatever it is, what are they going to do when a group of people rises up and they say, well, I want to marry my dog. I have a right to marry my dog and the government must provide dog insurance. You think I'm crazy? You really believe I'm crazy? 40 years ago, had you thought and said, wow, there's going to come a point where women are going to become men fully, not only dress as men, but have everything that requires to be a man, and men are going to become women totally. 40, 50 years ago, you would have never thought that. But now it's part of culture. It's part of what you see on TV. It's part of what you hear in the news. So where are we headed with this mental self-examination? We're headed to perversion. Because that's where it leads. To perversion. Amen. Be please. This is what the Christian focuses on. Spiritual self-examination. A spiritual self-examination means this. That the study of one's spiritual behavior and motivations. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to the Pharisees of his day, look, you guys think you're so righteous and you always clean the cup on the outside. He said, but your cup on the inside is dirty and filthy. Amen. He said, why don't you clean the cup on the inside and then the whole, the whole cup is clean. What was he telling them? What you guys are doing, he said to the Pharisees of his day, what you guys are doing is a mental self-examination without the power of the Holy Spirit. And mental self-examination without the power of the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to more perversion. Amen. I don't care who you are. That is where it's going to lead you. Amen? So spiritual self-examination is the study of one's spiritual behavior and motivation. She says, well, why do I have to, I mean, you know, can I think whatever I want and feel whatever I want as long as I don't hurt anybody? Well, that's what the world says. But Jesus said, look, you better be careful and not wish evil on one of your brothers. Because you're, you're, you're in danger of judgment. Well, you haven't done anything. You just wished it. So what's the deal? The deal is when we wish stuff from the spirit, from the true heart that we are, devils pick that up and then they take it and they hurt people. That's why he said, be careful. 
Be careful that you don't let your heart just do whatever it wants, you know? And what happens is that if we don't have a spiritual self-examination, which is the study of one's spiritual behavior and motivations, we're not going to fulfill the commission that God has called us upon this earth. Amen. Somebody said, well, the commission is to preach to others. Exactly. And how are you going to preach to others when you yourself don't even live that life? Amen. But people look at us and they go, you bunch of hypocrites. You're telling me to go to church? You're telling me to pray? You're telling me to believe in God? You don't know you're worse than I am. Mm. Amen. Amen. Give me a psalm. Uh, uh, see, please look at what David says in the Old Testament. David said, search me, O God, and know my heart or my spirit. And what? And try me. And know my concerns and see if there's any rebellious way in me and lead me in the ancient ways. The ancient ways is the beginning of the Garden of Eden. Amen. Amen. So point number one, living in the principle of self-examination through the power of the Holy Spirit, the believer must give permission to be examined. Wow. And so well, how does that work? Well, when you go to the doctor, don't you give the doctor permission to examine you? Amen. Exactly. You know, you get so you just going in and having an appointment. Okay, sit down, take your shirt off, and let me do this, let me do that. You already gave permission uh, to the doctor to to uh, to bring an examination on you. And David said, "Search me, O God, and know my heart." Then you must give permission. You must get permission. How many Christians pray, "Bless my kid, bless my dog, bless my job, bless this, bless that." Oh, bless uh, my mom and dad and bless the whole family and in Jesus' name curse those that, who are evil and bless the Lord. And we walk away year after year after year after year after year and we never dare say, can you examine me? Can you examine me, God? I'm, I'm giving you permission here to examine me. Why? Because you need to tell me what's really going on. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, let the light shine and reveal all the bedrooms of my house and the closets and those secret areas of my heart. Shut the light Amen. so that I can see. Amen. Say, well, Bishop, why do we need to do that? Because if you don't give him permission to bring a self-examination under the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to hurt people. Say, so, well, I want to hurt my neighbor. He's a, you know, he's a butthead. Well, I want to hurt my uncle Judas. He's a butthead. Well, you want to hurt your kids? You want to hurt your husband? You want to hurt your wife? Well, that's what you're going to hurt. You're not going to hurt people in Africa. You're not going to hurt people in China. You're not going to hurt the Iraqis or the Iranians. You're going to hurt those you love. Because you have not allowed, we have not allowed the Spirit of the, the Holy Spirit to, to bring a self-examination. Well, I get angry because that's just the way I am. Well, I get vengeful because that's just the way I am. Well, I'm going to hit before they hit me because that's the way I am. No, you're not that way. We are not that way. We're a brand new born again creation. Created in holiness and righteousness. So you got to give permission. Say, oh, Jesus, I'm going to start giving permission. Amen? Give me A under point number two. David says in Psalm 51, you can read the whole chapter, beautiful chapter. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the abundance of your compassion. Blot out my transgression or my sins. Amen? Blot them out. He's crying out to the Lord in Psalms 51. Be please. Look at what the New Testament says. For if by one man's, and I have a note there, Adam, talking about Adam. For if by one man's trespass, death, death reigned through him, then how much more will those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? Amen. Point number two, living in the 
principle of self-examination through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Not through your knowledge. Amen. Not through your mental understanding. Not through psychology books who, who uh, uh, negate and then don't believe in the Christ Jesus. And, you know, it's just up to you to decide what you want to do. Well, I'm going to marry a crocodile. Well, go ahead. That's what you want. You say, well, that's crazy, Bishop. Well, like I said earlier, 50 years ago, you would have argued. I would have told you men are going to become women and women are going to be become men. Mm, help me now. Amen. Living in the principle of self-examination through the power of the Holy Spirit, Christians must believe, notice this, you must believe in the abundance of grace and forgiveness of sin that is found in the New Testament. Amen. Why must you believe that? Because if you don't believe in the abundance of grace and you don't believe in righteousness and the forgiveness of sin, you will not allow the Holy Spirit to self-examinate you. And why do people do not allow the Spirit to, 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 to self-examinate them? Because they say, well, good Lord, if you're going to start searching stuff, you're going to find some stuff in there that I don't like. Amen. And what if you go into my spiritual closet and you find all this junk? Oh, my God, I don't think I could handle that, God. So if you don't believe in the abundance of grace and the forgiveness of sin, well, then you're not going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you what's really in your heart. You have to believe it. Amen. You have to believe it. Amen. Amen. What do you have to believe? In the abundance of grace. So if you're staying away from the Holy Spirit allowing you to self-examine and examine me, Holy Spirit, come on, I'm giving you permission. If you're staying away from that, then you must come to the conclusion as a believer. Maybe I don't believe in the abundance of grace and the, and the forgiveness of sin that is found in the New Testament. Yeah. Maybe I don't believe that Jesus died on the cross. Oh, you believe you're going to heaven? Oh, yes, sir, I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah, baby, I'm going to walk on streets of gold. Oh, yeah, man, praise God, I'm not going to hell. Hallelujah. Oh, but you don't believe in the abundant grace of the Lord Jesus and the forgiveness of sin? Well, then you've got a problem. we got a problem. Because if you don't believe in this, that it contradicts that you believe in Him saving your soul. Amen. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. 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 Point number two, living in the principle of self-examination through the Holy Spirit. Christians must believe in the abundance of grace and forgiveness of sin that is found in the New Testament. Amen. Give me a under point number three. Continue from Psalms 51. Notice what David says. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. All right. He says, my sin is ever before me. Be pleased. I was brought forth in iniquity. And in sin, my mother conceived me. You want me to be completely truthful. So teach me wisdom. Amen. What do we tell our kids? Tell me the truth. Uh, well, um, uh, daddy, this happened in my... Tell me the truth. Well, mommy, this happened and then there's the... You know. My granddaughter said, uh, 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 Grandpa, this boy pushed me in, in church. I said, well, look at the cameras. And then I said, well, what are you doing inside the crib? No, no, don't look at that. <laughs> I said, what do you mean don't look at that? No, 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 not that part, Grandpa. Go, go, go. I said, well, why are you jumping off the chair? No, Grandpa, not that part, Grandpa. No, no, you got to go further so I can show you. Huh. Amen? No, God wants us to be, uh, Psalms 51, well, God wants us to be completely truthful with Him. What is that? When, you, when he, he examines you through the power of the Holy Spirit and you give him permission, you must be honest. Give me the point, please. Point number three. Living in the principle of self-examination through the power of the Holy Spirit requires an honesty before the presence of the Holy Father. What would have happened when God came upon Cain and he said, Why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? If Cain was truthful with Yahweh, he would have told them, Well, you know what? I'm real angry at, at Abel, and I want to kill the sucker. That's what I want to do. Can you help me with that? Mm -hmm. 
When are you truthful? Well, don't be too truthful to, with your husband because you may get a divorce. Careful with that. Don't be truthful, too truthful with your wife because she may divorce you too. You dog, get out. Don't be truthful with your kids because then they got secrets on you. They can come back and say, well, you did it too. Mm. Say, oh, Lord Jesus. Well, who am I supposed to be truthful with, Pastor? You're supposed to be truthful in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Honest in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Self-examination through the Holy Spirit requires honesty. What did, what did David say? He said, my, my sin is before you. It's before me. I acknowledge my sins. He said, I was brought forth in iniquity. And my, in sin, and my mother conceived me. He said in, in Psalms 51, you want me to be completely truthful. So teach me how to do that. So, well, Bishop, what am I supposed to do then when self-examination comes to the body of the Holy Spirit? When he shows you, tell him, yes, I wanted to murder them stinkers. Yes, I wanted to take a shotgun and blow into heaven, send them right to Jesus right now. Yes, I wished evil on them. Yes, I did. Forgive me for that. In His presence, you've got to be honest. In His presence. Why? Because then, then if you're not honest, then there's no self-examination before the power of the Holy Spirit. He's showing you something and you're going, well, no, not that. Like my grandbaby said, no, Grandpa, not that. Go further. Go further. When He pushed me, well, you weren't supposed to be in the crib anyway. You weren't supposed to be jumping from the chairs anyway. No, no, go, go forward, Grandpa, not that part. And that's what we do with God. We don't want to be honest. Well, if you're not going to be honest with God, then who are you going to be honest with? Amen. Good Lord. If God was a husband, he'd be the perfect husband. If God was a wife, he'd be the perfect wife. If God was children, he'd be the perfect children. Who else but him? Amen. Amen. Who else but him? Point number three, living in the principle of self-examination through the power of the Holy Spirit requires an honesty before the presence of the Holy Father. Amen. Point number four, please. Living in the principle of self-examination through the power of the Holy Spirit, the believer must acknowledge Yahweh's omnipresence. You must acknowledge, if you're going to give Him permission to bring uh, uh, self-examination on you through the power of the Holy Spirit so you can see who you really are, not who you pretend to be. Mm. Tell your neighbor, don't pretend now. No, don't pretend. Jesus called those people hypocrites. He said, you hypocrites to the Pharisees, you actors. You're just pretending. You'll be holy. Clean the cup on the inside and the whole cup will be clean. <laughs> Woo! Help me, Jesus. Amen. Notice this. Give me uh, A under point number four. He said, against you I have sinned and done evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak and you're blameless. When you judge, be pleased. Where can I go from your spirit? Yes. Or where can I flee from your presence? He said, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, ha, you are there too. Yes. So when you allow him to self-examinate you through the power of the Holy Spirit, you better understand and acknowledge he's omnipresence. You can't hide, folks. He's everywhere. Give me C, please. Omnipresence means this, the presence of God everywhere at the same time. It was so funny because when my granddaughter comes over, she wants to play hide and seek, right? And she tells my, my wife, Grandma, go hide. Go hide, Grandma. And my wife's like, well, where? We're going to hide. You can't see me. Oh. We're adults, you know? I mean, really, where can you hide? Now, if you're a kid, you crawl into some little space, you know, you crawl into the bed, adults can do that. What did Adam and Eve do? After they sinned, the Bible says they hit 
behind the trees of the garden. Hmm. They must not believe that the presence of God was everywhere at the same time. Or maybe they believed it before, and then when the self-examination came by the power of the Holy Spirit, they said, no, we don't want to see that. Let's hide it. No, you've got to understand, He is everywhere at the same time. How does that help you? You can't hide what you do, folks. We can't hide what we do. You can hide it from our wives. You can hide it from our husbands. We can hide it from the pastor and the bishop. And we can hide it, hide it from him. But you can't hide it from God. And how many people are going straight to hell because they believe, yeah, I did it and God didn't see me. Oh, I, I, I can't see. Yeah, I'm right. They don't believe in the omnipresence of God. And if you're going to believe in the principle of self-examination, you better believe and acknowledge He's everywhere, man. I can't hide it. I can't hide it. I can't hide my thoughts. I can't hide anything. You can hide it from your husband, wife, pastor, bishop, leaders, you know, but you can't hide it from the Lord. And you must acknowledge that because if you don't acknowledge that and understand that, you're not going to allow Him to bring examination on you. Because you think you can get away with it. Mm. Say, oh Lord Jesus. Yes, help me. Point number five. Living in the principle of self-examination through the Holy Spirit, a Christian must believe, this is a hard one, that Yahweh's judgments are true and righteous. See, we don't have a problem when God judges another country. Yeah, bomb the hell out of them Iraqis, God, and get them Iranians too. That's right. Is that all out of hell? And then Jesus can sort them out. I don't have a problem with that. But when those bombs hit our country, Houston, we got a problem. Well, how many Americans went in prayer right after 9-11 and said, God, was this your judgment? Well, it was just a bunch of the Saudi Arabians and Osama bin Laden taking over some planes. Was this your judgment? How many Americans said that? Not very many. Because Americans, and maybe half of the world, we have a problem in self-examination through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You must believe that judgments are true and righteous. When do we have a true problem? When it hits our country? And when do we have more problem than that? When it hits our home! Every time something bad happens, bad, I'm not talking about you had a flat tire, I'm talking bad, and it brings a shaking into the family, sickness, divorce, uh, you know, whatever it is. You must understand and say, wait a minute, is this God's judgment? Did I bring that upon myself? Or you start pointing to others. Oh, it was them. It was them. Amen? Notice what uh, Psalms 51 says, give me A under point number 5. You are justified when you speak, Lord, and you are blameless when you judge. Hmm. Give me B, please. Look at Revelation 16 says, And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Hmm. See, please. After this, I heard something like a loud voice of a vast multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belongs to our God, for true and righteous are His judgments. How many people believe in the sentence before that? Hallelujah, salvation and glory belongs to our God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Jesus, it's all, I'm saved. But then they erase the part that says, for true and righteous are your, ju your judgments. Amen. And what happens when you don't self-examinate? You're going to bring judgment upon you. Amen. Now, I guarantee you that God is not going to allow a nuclear bomb to explode in your house. Of course.
course not. Hmm. See, I'm having trouble with that one. I can tell. I can tell that God's people are having trouble with that one. But it's true. David said, you are justified. The prophet Nathan came to David and said, you're the man that, that took the little sheep from the, from the shepherd that only had a little sheep. He took Bathsheba and uh, committed adultery and killed Uriah. He, the, Nathan said, you're that man. What do you want? In another, in another situation, he sinned. And the prophet said to David, all right, pick three. Man attacking you or a plague coming upon you. David said, give me the plague because I can find more mercy on God than men. And if you're going to self, allow the Holy Spirit to self-examinate you. You're going to have to trust, man. Your, your judgments are true and righteous even when it includes my bambinos. Hundreds and hundreds upon ladies would call when I was on the radio. Can you play for my son? Can you pray for my son? Well, what's, what happened to your son? He's in prison. Why is he in prison, uh, sister? Well, uh, you know, that girl he married. Oh, how old is he? Oh, he's 30. Oh, okay, so he married this girl and that, yeah. Never once did they tell me that rascal began to deal with drugs and he got caught. And I would ask him, okay, what are you asking? Well, we're asking for God to get him out. And I would think, so he can sell more drugs. <coughs> That's what you want. Hmm. Now, I finally got tired. Say, Bishop got tired. <laughs> yeah, you don't want me around when I get tired. You have a rude awakening around me when I get tired. I got tired and I told her, is your son saved? No, brother, you know he's never gone to church and he just doesn't know. I thought, oh my God. You're more concerned about him coming out of jail than his soul and salvation in the morning? Oh, help me now. There's a person that didn't believe in the judgments of God are true and righteous. 